Schwaz, S-H-W-Z stock. This is a cannabis stock that's actually in my top picks. One of the best cannabis stocks you can get your hands on. They're growing rapidly. They're now up to about 29 dispensaries throughout Colorado and now New Mexico. New Mexico, of course, which on April 1st just flipped to adult use legalization. I think they've got about nine dispensaries down here. I'm in Santa Fe, New Mexico right now myself. Um, have lived up in Denver. They were Medicine Man Technologies, but there was, uh, they split the company. So this is where they are now. They have about 10 more dispensaries on the way this year. So this company is going to grow. I wanted to put together the SHWZ stock forecast, kind of lay out why I think this stock is going higher. And if you saw the thumbnail for this uh, video, I think this stock's going way high. Based on where they are, their share count, their revenue growth rate, what they're going to be doing with EBIT and uh, other margins, this is a cannabis stock you want to get your hands on. In the meantime, investing is a popularity contest. Right now, cannabis stocks are not exactly the most popular. Given that, if you're considering this, there's a sort of a saying that Warren Buffett uses all the time. One of the greatest value investors there is. Be fearful when others are greedy. Be greedy when others are fearful. Cannabis stock is we're, what we're doing. Cannabis stocks are basically we're waiting for federal legalization where these stocks can then uplist to NASDAQ. I expect there will be some movement once the Senate starts putting its introducing its stocks or its version of the bill for cannabis federal legalization. I expect there's going to be a lot of people rushing in, chasing, chasing stocks like SHWZ stock, which is significantly below value. So if you got in today, others are going to rush in behind you. But I don't expect that to uh, take too long. I expect there to be some kind of rush and then the markets die down once again. So don't, but don't be disheartened. That's price movement. For you guys who are wanting to get in, get out, make movement, this is the time to be eyeing these things up, lining up some purchases. This is a stock that basically Schwaz has the ability to kind of backstock any kind of losses because they're going to be significantly profitable over many years. Granted, I doubt you'll buy the absolute bottom. We call that... Uh, trying to catch falling daggers. You tend to get your fingers nicked up when that happens. But this is a company that eventually will continue to be profitable, number one. Number two, uplist to the NASDAQ if they don't get acquired first. So let's jump in to uh, the computer. I want to show you a few things, what I'm looking at, what you should be looking at as well, and why this is a stock to buy. Okay, before we jump into uh, looking at some numbers, a couple quick things. First off, I haven't done a video here on my YouTube channel in about two weeks now. Um, I've been doing a lot of things in the background. One of the things I'm doing is I'm launching a video course on my website. So if you haven't stopped by the website, this is all going to, you're going to start seeing things over the next couple days. Uh, we're, this is Monday, just prior to Memorial Day weekend, over this weekend. Um, I should have everything launched and ready to go. You'll want to take a look at this because I'm offering some pre-sales, uh, things like that coming up. Um, big changes on the website over the past couple of weeks. I don't know if you've actually seen the website, completely changed. But I do uh, discounted cash flow calculations here. They're models. They give us an idea as to what a stock should be worth given certain variables. But again, as I mentioned, stocks are a popularity can't contest. So although I can come up with a model giving you a price point, I do this scientifically, but we're dealing in a market that is unscientific and maybe irrational. That irrationality is your opportunity. Um, some, the discounted cash flow statement itself, if you've never seen these kinds of things in my video course that I'm going to be offering, it is, I explain everything. 
uh, value investing, how to look into uh, reading uh, financial statements, and how to break down the methodology that I use for discounted cash flow statements. Kind of, I build up that so that you can learn these things and really empower yourself for your investing future. So um, my hope is that I'm starting to bang out about four to five videos per day starting next week uh, as we get into the summertime. So let's take a look at these guys. Um, as I mentioned, 29 dispensaries, but that number is changing real quick. Uh, you really have to kind of read through what they're talking about uh, just to kind of, and then add things up. Go to the website. You'll see that there are, they're in Colorado and they are in New Mexico. They are now um, an MSO, multi-state operator, regional, smallish. But I look at these guys and I say they have target written all over their heads. I don't say that in a bad way at all. Take a look at, say, True Leaf, who just picked up Harvest Health over the past. I mean, that deal, I think, got announced about a year ago. They closed about six months ago. But in that one big move, True Leaf took care of one state, which was a big deal. Because Arizona, they're not allowing any more dispensaries at this time. And I think that's pretty much going to be a permanent thing. Arizona is going gangster. So how do you get into Arizona? Well, if you're true leave, they picked up the biggest players out there. Another one of my top picks, uh, I just did a, uh, an analysis on them, Vexed Sciences. They're in Arizona. So if you're looking for, they have two dispensaries down there. If you're looking for that kind of monopoly, there's one to look at. But looking here at Schwaz, they're the biggest player from dispensary standpoint in Colorado. And, and I think they're also now the biggest players in New Mexico, but you're talking about a state with like two and a half million people. So that's sort of like being the tallest person in first grade. Uh, still plenty of room to grow or something like that. There's another thing that they just did, a strategic partnership with Lowell Farms. I love Lowell. Yet again, another one of my top picks. Lowell Farms, they are one of the best social media cannabis companies out there. They get a couple million impressions monthly. And the, my, my attitude towards that is, number one, they're doing a great job on their social media. Number two, there's a reason why so many people are talking about Lowell Farms. Their product is that good. Given that, Lowell Farms has a, a strategic partnership with Ascend Wellness, who's up in... Uh, like the Northeast of the United States. Ascend will be selling Lowell's products in throughout their dispensaries, which means now there's more production going to go through Ascend Wellness's uh, facilities, which is great for Ascend Wellness. Lowell, all they have to do is sit back and collect a check. Same thing here. Schwaz is going to be uh, selling Lowell Farms in their dispensaries. Lowell really doesn't have to lift a finger. They will continue to do their marketing, which they're already doing that. So it's not like they're doing a whole lot more. But this product does very well. If you want to get Lowell Farms in Colorado or New Mexico, you have to go to, through Schwa's dispensaries. So it's a win-win for everybody across the board. It increases production going through any individual facility, i.e. Schwaz's facilities that they now have in both Colorado and New Mexico. This lower, lowers marginal profit or costs per unit. So that's a, that's a huge benefit for both companies. And if you're a low farmer, uh, low farms uh, stockholder, you now have two companies who are selling your product for basically zero effort. That's pure revenue. Got to love that. Let's move forward. Here we have current revenue. And as you can see, some of the um, mergers and acquisitions that Schwaz has done, you can see the big jump. They just hit a uh, record revenue for themselves. 
But uh, it, a lot of this wasn't organic. Some of it was. And this is what I really try to look for. It's one thing to grow by doubling your size by acquiring another company and sh diluting your stock by a factor of two. It's another thing that if you have a dispensary that sells $1 million per year, the next year it sells, say, $1.25 million. That's called organic growth. That's what we really want. So despite the fact that they did hit record numbers, despite the fact that there are a lot of deals closing this year, it's hard for us to actually see what kind of organic growth they're going to have, but that's what we really want to be looking for. Can't really kind of slice it up, but we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, gross margins. This is something that I'm, I obviously look toward heavily. Um, want to see these guys get above 50%, plain and simple. They got to get better at that. They were there before it's sort of sliding downward. Um, but I think that they're probably going to go ahead and get there. The S&P 500, to kind of give you a baseline comparison, roughly 55% gross margins for all 500 companies. Some of the best cannabis stocks that I'm looking at on any particular time, you're looking at 60 to 65%. So from a gross margin standpoint, if Schwaz were to improve there, they could see this all trickle downward and really improve the bottom line. So this is something that despite the fact that they already have revenue growth, uh, that they already have revenue, improving margins, getting better at what they do means more profits down the road. Um, operating efficiencies, they were there roughly about 30%. Here's the thing, um, S&P 500, roughly 17.5%. These guys were roughly about 35%, which means they were double where they needed to be. You want the lowest possible number because this is a ratio based upon cost versus revenue. So you are looking for the lowest possible number. All these companies are going to get there. And this is sort of the slingshot that gets these cannabis stocks moving forward, uh, basically because if their revenue does double over the, say, the course of two to four years, but their baseline operating costs remain the same, this pushes that operating efficiency number lower and lower. These companies, there's only going to be one CEO, all right? So if, they're, if that one CEO is operating over top of multiple states, um, say a True Leaf, Kim Rivers, being in say nine, 10 states, and she doubles that into say 15, 20 states. There's only that one cost for one CEO, but the revenue may double and then may triple, things like that. So that's how that plays out. And that's what you're really kind of looking for. So right now, this is really kind of a, a growth story and a value story. So you have to kind of take that in perspective that you're playing the long game. Uh, EBITDA, they took a hit, but there were some um, one-offs due to write-offs and things like this. These guys were hitting roughly 22.5% to 25% EBIT versus revenue. That's right about where the S&P 500 is right now. Given that, should Schwaz push higher? and improve gross margins by, say, 5%, now all of a sudden they're 22.5%, they're outpacing the broader S&P 500 to 27.5%. So that's where the growth story really kicks in for these growth stocks. The value being that if you're holding on to this for a long time, you've got this stock that has revenue growth that is increasing rapidly, they're getting better at margins, and the bottom line is expanding that is where you're going to get your profits. Equity, this picture will change quickly. Um, and equity is really the picture for me. When I look at this, I ask the question, is management creating value for me, a shareholder? When you look at these stocks, you want to see increasing total equity. Equity being assets, less liabilities. 
equity gives you the ability to create and generate revenue, which gives you the ability to create and generate profits. Bottom line. Want to see this kind of increase? There's going to be a lot of changes here with the new acquisitions. So we'll see what happens uh, with total equity. All right. And here's your revenue projections over the course of the next five years. 2022, looking for 175, 240 for 2023, 300 in 2024, 2025, 2026, we're looking for 350 and 400. I really eased this back a lot. I could have easily pushed these numbers. Um, if you are going to get involved in my video course, the spreadsheets that I have using for the DCF, which we're about to get in right now, you can. I'll give you the ability to download one and you can start playing with those numbers. And given that, you're able to um, cr come up with your own projections. Now, with this, again, there's going to be multiple closures. This is just Schwa's right now. We're getting 10 more dispensaries, which is, what, a 35% increase in the total number of dispensaries. So these numbers are completely obsolete. On the one hand, you're going to see a lot more revenue. On the other hand, you're going to see a lot more shares because they did small stock deals, things like this. So don't just be jumping through hoops thinking that's it. Your color of your Porsche is going to be red. Okay, so here's your assumptions that I played with. 20% um, perpetual growth rate. That's low. Could have been 25, 30, 35. Uh, again, this is Schwa's as is not with the future growth. So immediately, as soon as these deals start closing, I have to redo this. Um, buck 33 was the current share price when I did this this morning. 53 million outstanding, 200 million in debt and cash of almost 50 million. Uh, market capitalization, they brought in about 71 million for these guys. And here are, you can do a screenshot on this. Here are the numbers. Um, kind of gives you uh, a breakdown of how this works. Again, if you're going to get involved in my video course, all this will be explained. You'll get a spreadsheet that you can play around with. Um, I generally use percentages that kind of come in and are roughly about equivalent from one company to the next. Some companies outperform in, say, CapEx or something like that. So these are variables you're going to be able to play around with. Intrinsic value for these guys. 29.53. This is a stock that I really kind of backed off when I put these numbers together. I was like, wow, that, my original number is like, no, that's a little too high. But these are models, and I stress that. Just right now, we're looking at cannabis stocks. I mean, this is a this stock is trading at a buck 33 because no one is looking at cannabis stocks. They're OTC, all right? You get all these players who are hitting their Robin Hood and other places. Um, I, I, on my forum, I'm hearing guys sitting there saying, hey, my my brokerage is no longer letting us trade OTCs now. All right, you're removing the pool of potential of investors. Being on the OTC, you really got to play the long game and sit there and say, yeah, we might get some pushing and shoving, things like that. That's great. But your strategy would be eventually the stocks up list to NASDAQ. And if you can wait that game out, you're going to do well. And here's the intrinsic value. Should we see the Senate push forward with its um, legalization bill in the next couple months? This is uh, we're a weekend away from su the official start of summer. Um, I expect a lot of interest to start trickling in and I expect these stocks to be pushed around a lot. Then there's going to be a period when the hoopla is all done and these stocks are going to fall right back down. What we're really looking for is that NASDAQ uplist because that's when the real money steps in. All right. Now I'll be saying this over and over again throughout my videos all summer long so that you can manage your expectations. A lot of guys think that's it going through the moon. Good luck because these OTC stocks are not going through the moon. They may shoot up real quick, real fast, real high, but then they're coming right back down. Expectations management. 
real quick look at this uh, charts. We've been at these prices before. They suck. Unless you're a value investor looking to squeeze everything you can. If this stock were to hit 30 bucks, it's trading at a buck 33. You're multiplying by 25. Find me another stock on the, and that could happen over the course of several months, but you can't find that kind of potential in the broader S&P 500. I should have the video course pre-sales available after Memorial Day weekend. I want to say thanks for stopping by, hitting up the uh, like and the, um, leaving the comments as always. Should be able to get some consistent videos out here coming at you over the next, uh, all throughout summer. We'll see you in the next video.